Hey guys, what's going on? In this video, I'm going to talk about how to read New York Times article without having an account there. In front of me, I have the New York Times website opened. I have already cleared up the browser cache and the history, so it's like this is the first time I'm opening it in the new setting. And if I try to open it, the first article, I can read the article without any problem. They do not block the content. They just like a, give me a prompt that, hey, create a free account to access to the more uh, stuff, right? Yet I can read the article without any problem, as you can see. So if I try to open the next article for the second, uh, like the second article, this time they will block me. They do not allow me to read the article and they force me they want to force me to create an account. So this is a problem from my perspective, because all I want to do is to read an article which is free. It is not the paid article and I do not want to have an account there. So I did a bit of uh, like trial and error. I have uh, come across four approaches to bypass this uh, stuff, which is pretty annoying and i'm going to demonstrate them one by one i start with the simplest approach which doesn't require any tool and also is very simple no let's say uh, technical knowledge also required then uh, gradually i move to more let's say sophisticated and complicated stuff so let me open a new article, for example, the losses uh, we share. So if you see now the article is blocked, right? So the first approach is load the page. When the content is loaded, just a stop. Just, just click on the stop button. So now you see the content actually is already showing properly without any problem, right? The reason for it is basically the script that is responsible to block the user and hide the content loads at last. So if you can stop the rest of the page loading, then you can actually read the articles without any problem. Let me demonstrate to you with another article. Let's say this article. So you see now the, now the content is loaded because I can see from actually the scroll bar that okay, the contents are here, then I stop the page, right? So let's go through it for last time. So I click on reload. Now you see the content is, is, is there, there's no problem. But the moment that basically the last is a script is loaded then it stops the page it hides the content so again load stop then i can see the articles with the article articles content without any problem so this was the first approach super simple very straightforward no hassle completely doesn't require any tools or whatever. So the second approach is to have a basically a, a, a let's say an extension that gives you the capability of literally blocking the JavaScript because the the script which uh, which is responsible to hide the content and blocks the user from reading the content is basically is a JavaScript. So what you can do is to install a, a install an extension that blocks the JavaScript that gives you uh, the ability to selectively block the JavaScript on on certain websites. So in my case, I'm using a uh, you blocker origin this is originally is a is is an ad ad blocker so but it has many more capabilities one of its capability is to block javascript 
and to do that to do so all i have to do is just click on this button as you can see it says disable javascript on this website so if i click on it and try to refresh this page again then it doesn't load any javascript and the page loads without any problem note that when i disable the javascript on new york times the page loads in a fraction of second it doesn't take a time at all you see super fast it's like the fastest thing that i've ever seen because they put too much javascript garbage and it load and it also eats up the resources on my machine and it takes long time to load it slows things down and also it prompts me like a bunch of garbage and stuff hey like you have to log in or whatever so if i disable it i don't see anything it loads super fast and additionally i don't lose anything because i also the only thing that i'm interested in is just reading the content i'm not interested in the comments i'm not interested in the promotion i'm not interested in anything else all i'm interested is the good old days uh, printed newspaper style without much of things to be bothered with i honestly prefer that new york times actually they put the articles all of them behind the paywall than practicing this uh, like weird weird stuff to force the user to create an account on their site so let's move on so when i disable the javascript uh, using my ublock origin extension then things load fast and without any problem and much cleaner i can also make these changes permanent by clicking this lock button so if i click this so whenever I go to any New York Times URL, then it doesn't load the JavaScript for me. But uh, since I'm going to demonstrate the other stuff, so I have to unblock it and then make it permanent, load it again. And then unfortunately, it's going to take a very long time for me. And then again, block the stuff. So that was the second approach. Uh, let's move to the third approach. The third approach is a bit indirect, means that uh, we are not going to do anything in the website itself except just copying the URL. So for this article, I already copied the URL. So now all I have to do is to go to this website, archive.org, which is the Internet Archive, and then look up for that URL that I have copied. In 99.9% .9 of the time, you can actually find the page, except maybe this time that I cannot find it, right? But that doesn't matter, because if the page doesn't is not, is not available, what I can do is, I can go to the Internet Archive again, and actually I can submit the page myself without any problem. You see here, there is a save page now. I can paste the URL, save the page, and this one actually stores the page in on the Internet Archive. It takes a, a snapshot of it. It is going to take a minute, and then after that, I can load the snapshot without any problem and has all the content that I need, right? So unfortunately, the article I copied the link from actually hasn't submitted to the uh, internet archive but as i said in 99.9% .9 of the time uh, all the articles actually are available there so let's let's try our luck one more time with this article and let's look up for in the internet archive see whether we can find it or not So you see there is already a snapshot of this article and all I have to do is just to load it up. It has actually different, probably could be different content. There are three snapshots, depends. Most of the time the versions are the same. Sometimes there might be a different content, depends whether the New York Times has updated that article or no. I'm not sure exactly who is submitting this uh, New York Times article to the Internet Archive. 
It could be the New York Times itself or it could be someone else, a third party. But that doesn't really matter for our case because all we are interested is to just read the content like here without getting bothered. So let's first uh, finish this up. So as you can see, it loads the page without any problems, no issue. So for the page, this one, that actually there was no snapshot of it. I have already submitted the page and now I can actually load it here and it should load the page without any issue again. So this is the one that again, that it had no snapshot. So you see, this is the first snapshot that is submitted. And now it's absolutely clear without any problems. I can read the content because the most important part is the text and that's all matters. So this is the third approach is a bit more, let's say technical and a bit more cumbersome, but it works regardless. So now let's move to the fourth approach, which is the last approach. That one is a bit hacky, but I really like it because it it's actually involved with the command line the stuff. And it's good. I think the Linux enthusiasts will like it. So here in front of me, I have my command line uh, application open. So all I have to do is to install a text based browser and then try to open the page in my browser. So for example, here I copy the link one more time. And in my machine, I have already installed W3M. W3M is a text-based browser. You can install it, let's say, if you are on Ubuntu or Debian-based distribution, you can install it using sudo apt install W3M, if I'm not mistaken. Let me try it. Yeah, so that's the correct command. So I have, as I have already installed it, it's not going to install one more time. So all I have to do again is to just like say W3M, pass the New York Times link, and then boom, the page has loaded. No advertisement, nothing, loads super fast, and above all, it contains everything that I'm interested in. Okay, I think I loaded the source code actually. So, okay, I press a key that, that has loaded the source code. So, it loads everything without any problem, super fast, no issue. I can even do any text processing on it. If I'm interested, I can save the page, do whatever I want without any issue and without even creating an account in the New York Times. So, that's pretty much it for this video. Thanks for watching and have a great time. Bye.